we start a course on degradation of materials. It is uh, the course name is environmental degradation materials. So, series of lectures will be taken uh, uh, on this uh, topic and I am uh, K Mandal, I am in a faculty at uh, material science and engineering department. IIT Kanpur and this course is under national program on technology enhanced learning which is in short called NPTEL. And in this course we will be concentrating on the degradation mechanism of materials when the material is exposed to environment and also we would be looking at uh, the characteristics of the degradation of materials and we would like to see their different forms of degradation as well as their implication on economics as well as uh, eco economy economy on the economy on the safety of the equipment or the process when the material is undergoing degradation and when the processes that would be involved will be physical in nature or chemical in nature or there could be a combination of mechanical effect or there could be mechanical effect as well as chemical effect. So, all those things will be covered and we will also try to cover all sort of materials, because we know that there are in there are four major varieties of materials, metals and non metals are the com are the major groups and then we have in the non metal we have polymers, we have ceramic and also we will be considering composite, which is mixture of two or more phases and those phases consist of metal non metal or metal metal. And uh, the kind of uh, effect would be considering which will uh, lead to degradation which could be a, a mechanical heat or radiation or chemical action of chemical reagents like oxygen or uh, moisture or acid all those things we will try to cover in this particular course. And so, what would be the broad essence of this course uh, that we would try to see a mechanism of material degradation then we would like to consider characteristics of of material degradation then try to find out what are the different forms of degradation then uh, we would also try to find out what are the uh, reasons, reasons means uh, we would like to see that what are the factors that uh, factors guiding degradation. Now, 
in this also would like to once we know the mechanism characteristics forms and reasons finally we would like to try we would like to see what are the control mechanism control processes control processes so that any degradation will will not be good for practical application so we would like to see that how we can control that degradation so that the material can function for a longer period of time now before we come to little more about our degradation let us see what are the things will be covered in this particular course mainly the corrosion and oxidation of metals and alloys those are actually example of material degradation those part will be those would part would be covered in detail and the other things by which degradation can happen that is one is wear or radiation those things we will touch up just but we will we'll just see in brief but the main consideration in this course would be corrosion and oxidation of metals and alloys and the prevention mechanism. Now, if we see the course content. Now, in the course content, it will start with uh, the definition, introduction, where we would consider definition, then we would like to see the need, the need for studying this particular course. Introduction in the introduction, we will see definition different forms then would like to see cost of corrosion and then would like to briefly see the electrochemical nature of degradation which are basically mainly corrosion and oxidation and then what would be our aim for this particular course. Then secondly we will start with thermodynamics of of degradation. So, in the thermodynamics we would cover what are the processes that will be happening at the interface. So, processes at interface then we would see free energy consideration to understand the degradation rather we to understand whether a material would like to go for degradation or not, what is the driving force. Then we would like to consider EMF series, because in corrosion EMF series would be very crucial. Then we would like to see important reactions, which could be in aqueous medium or in gaseous medium. For example, in case of oxidation we can we would discuss what would be the reaction of the metal with oxygen or gaseous oxygen and in case of aqueous solution we would like to see what could be uh, the reactions that would be happening at the interface between the metal and the environmental species for example, uh, hydrogen ion or dissolve oxygen or moisture or it could be a different metal cation if those are present in the solution 
what could be the effect of those different metal cations on the degradation effect of or the corrosion effect of the metals and alloys. Then we would see a reference electrode, cell potential, a reference electrode and then we would also try to see Pobex diagram. to see that uh, at particular pH level and uh, potential level, what could be the phases that would form on the surface of the metal in contact with the environment. And this is nothing but E versus pH diagram, potential versus pH diagram. And this is mainly uh, uh, considered in case of aqueous corrosion. Then we would see the kinetic of corrosion, we would see then kinetics of degradation, it could be oxidation, kinetics of oxidation or the kinetics of corrosion and there we would like to discuss uh, mainly the uh, current density then we would like to discuss the rates then one important issue in corrosion is exchange current density We would like to discuss uh, the polarization, and finally, we would like to see what are the experimental techniques so the experimental techniques we would allow us to find out what would be the extent of polarization, what could be the current density of different polarization for example, cathodic or anodic polarization. And then once we understand these issues, we can get to uh, the mixed potential theory. Mixed potential theory which actually binds uh, kinetics of degradation and thermodynamics of degradation and this is the advanced uh, theory in order to understand the corrosion of metals and alloys. Then uh, we would also see when a, and then once we know the mixed potential theory we can understand many of those corrosion effects from that mixed potential advanced theory and then would go to passivation. Since we know that uh, many metals when it reacts with the environment it forms a surface film for example, iron it forms uh, ferric oxide on the surface if we come to chromium, chromium from forms chromium oxide on the surface and that chromium oxide gives a protection to the chromium to the metal uh, because that of uh, the film which is actually a passive film that, uh, that is forming on the surface and that uh, demarcates or uh, that prevents that environment to further react with the metal. The one particular example is stainless steel 18 8 stainless steel where we have 18 percent chromium. 18 weight percent chromium and 8 weight percent nickel and in that since we have 18 weight percent chromium that chromium forms a chromium oxide surface and that passive hits the iron or stainless and that gives the stainless property of the steel. Then once we understand these issues then we can discuss we will discuss uh, 
different forms of corrosion. And in the different forms of corrosion, we would also discuss uh, uh, major uh, discuss what are the different factors those will affect corrosion. For example, we can think of uh, factors like the stress factor, we can think of the impurity factor, we can think of the presence of oxygen in the environment we can think of presence of impurity in the uh, environment or conductivity or the salt content in the environment those factors will definitely guide or different different definitely affect the corrosion of metals and alloys. And then uh, we will talk about and in the different we will talk about corrosion measurement. corrosion measurement and failure analysis. Since, we once we know different forms of corrosion and different factors, then we can come to this corrosion measurement and failure analysis. So, the corrosion measurement and failure analysis in this case, we would discuss uh, different test methods different test methods and of course, we would also try to see the test methods are either field exposure test or electrochemical test. So, it could be field exposure test or plant test or it could be electrochemical test. Now, once we know uh, uh, the corrosion measurement and failure analysis, failure analysis and then we can go for protection mechanism or control mechanism then in the corrosion control then we will then corrosion controlled will be corrosion control will be discussed. Uh, that actually gives the idea that how to go for protection of metals and alloys in a particular environment for a, for a particular specific use and that has this has five different segments. One is it could be materials, material selection, then we have design of equipment, then we can have change in environment, for example, change in environment means environment we have dissolved oxygen. So, if somehow we can think of some mechanism by which we can get rid of that oxygen, then corrosion rate can be reduced to a great extent. So, that kind of change in the environment, in the change in the environment we can also think of adding some external agent reagents for example, inhibitor which will take care of uh, the corrosion which will which will reduce the corrosion rate to a great extent. Then we can think of electrochemical ways of electrochemical ways of protection which are mainly cathodic or anodic protection. Then we can also th think of coating, so we will discuss coating. Now, uh, once we have uh, uh, this uh, all the topics till now and those topics will be covering metals and alloys. But at the same time, we would briefly discuss uh, the corrosion of or the degradation of the other materials 
like polymer, composite or uh, ceramic material, but that would be very brief. But mainly the, concent, uh, mainly the discussion will be concentrating on the corrosion of metals and alloys. Now, once we have this things, then uh, we will discuss uh, um, oxidation or high temperature oxidation, high temperature degradation. high temperature degradation. In the high temperature degradation, the main discussion would be on uh, oxidation, then we would also discuss uh, liquid metal corrosion. and then of course, hot corrosion. In the oxidation, we would like to see again the thermodynamics as well as kinetics of oxidation will be studied, will be, will be discussed and there also we will see the what are the protection mechanism or the protection routes we can employ in order to reduce the oxidation rate of a particular metal and metal or alloy in a particular high temperature application, so that uh, the operation can be carried out for a longer duration. And finally, we would definitely conclude uh, uh, by seeing what could be the effect of this material degradation on the society or on the industry. So, this are the course content in brief. Now, let us get into the first part, which is the introduction. Now, when we start talking about material degradation, we need to define it. So, and we need to also know why do we want to study that. These two things are to be needed first. First, let us start with why do we want to study. So, why to study? degradation and what to study and then of course, how to study. So, if we answer that then we would have the purpose of this course or purpose of studying this particular or analyzing the degradation of materials. Now, if we come to see uh, the cost that is incurred by any uh, country towards the protection or prevention of material degradation, we have some number and that time we would, we would be able to see we would be like we would be we would, we would uh, appreciate that it involves lot of money. For example, few data if we see uh, the cost of corrosion in India is about 5 percent of total GDP of this of our country. So, the 5 percent is I have one rough data the cost of corrosion that means the corrosion related effect like uh, the prevention route prevention mechanism or prevention uh, ways we think of to operate that particular material for a longer period or uh, there could be loss of material or there could be replacement of the material due to the degradation. So, that is around 2 lakhs crore. So, so 2 lakh crore money rupees 2 lakh crore is the expenditure of India towards corrosion control or towards the towards the loss that we or loss or protection route we employ for protecting protecting for for 
uh, this towards this degradation of materials. Now, in case of US uh, one data uh, it says that the in US it is the cost is about cost of corrosion is about 260 billion dollar billion dollar. Now, if we see this number that means, we need to worry about it. And if we consider uh, different segments where we have say this corrosion problem, the in case of US data it says that the drinking water and sewer system that involves maximum cost which is around dollar 36 billion dollar. So, that means, it is actually a involves a lot of money and then forget about money we have if we have money then we can take care of it, but it also involves a lot of damage. Now, if we come to see damage for example, if a person has gone for prostate replacement let us say a bone is broken and there somebody replaces and that bone is replaced with a biomaterial let us say the titanium alloy and that rod is fitted in order to give strength to the rod is fitted in the in that in the place of that break or the dislocation of the fracture. And if that rod prematurely fails, then that person can go for can can even die. Okay, there could be failure uh, of bridges. There could be failure of uh, airplanes because of corrosion. So that is uh, uh, that is the loss of human life, uh, which is more important than the loss of money. Now, if we come to see what could be the direct cost and indirect cost. Then, in case of direct cost, we can see that in US data, ninety-eight, and the data is taken from www. dot corrosion doctors. dot org. So, source is this website. And that data shows that in infrastructure, infrastructure it involves around twenty two point six billion dollar, and then in case of utilities, utilities it is around. 47.9 billion and then transportation it is around 29.7 billion like that we have in case of production or manufacturing it is about 17.6 billion and in government uh, thing and then total is coming about around 137.9 billion dollar. Now, this direct cost involves it could be what are involved in that expensive materials, which can cater corrosion for a longer duration and which can be operated for a longer duration. And then we have over design. let us say one particular metal object is going through a continuous or uniform corrosion that means, all throughout the sections we have uniform dissolution. So, that time in order to operate that material for a longer duration generally the design criteria that is taken that increase in thickness of that material. So, that increasing thickness of the material would also involve a lot of money. Then third is cost of repair, or cost of or replacement, 
cost of repair or replacement of material. Then uh, fourth is employment of anti corrosion means. So, anti corrosion methods or means. So, these are the these are the main part which would lead to the direct cost in corrosion. Then we can also think of indirect cost in case of indirect cost and that time uh, it also uh, it is around close to around dollar two seventy five point five billion. So, it also involves a lot of money and what are the issues that involve that are involved in the uh, indirect cost? One is cost of labor, then we have a product loss of productivity. Let us say one particular material needs to be replaced because it had it has gone through a lot of corrosion. So, that replacement time in that replacement, replacement time we the production needs to be stopped. So, there is a gap in there is there is a loss of productivity and then this is because of delays happening due to replacement due to failure. So, those are coming up under this particular, but these are basically the direct reason and now this delay is leading to loss of productivity. Then we all it also involves cost of equipments which will be used for corrosion related activities. So, those are coming under indirect cost. So, we see that if we do not understand this environmental degradation materials, we cannot think of some sort of protection mechanism or protection methods to, uh, to, to have uh, control or to reduce this amount of money that is spent on corrosion. So, we need to study this. Now, coming to the definition part, if we come to see the definition of degradation, in general it says that the loss of performance, loss of performance of an engineering system and this loss of performance can be related to these parameters. One is uh, there could be loss of strength. loss of mechanical strength, then loss of uh, efficiency, then loss of lifetime, then loss of appearance. Loss of appearance means, for example, if we go for ornaments, if that is corroded, that the ornament becomes very dull looking. So, that is actually may, that means the loss of appearance. Then it also involve a wear, and then uh, there could be a expensive control system. expensive control 
and there could be a routine checkup so those involve the loss of performance and that is actually by the loss of performance of an engineering system an engineering system it practically involves materials so that is the uh, definition the general definition and when we consider degradation and there could be any natural phenomena that can be involved in the degradation. So, now uh, we see that uh, what could be the uh, losses it could be mechanical strength loss of mechanical strength it could be appearance it could be loss of material. Now, we need to see what are the environmental uh, overall what are the what are the natural uh, things uh, that can lead to degradation. If we see a material if we look at this material let us say this is my material this material can be used on the surface uh, of the earth crust or it can be used inside the soil or it can even be used in the uh, normal atmosphere. So, if we make a segment if we make a segment now in this segment we have uh, one is uh, soil and it can also involve uh, aqueous environment. aqueous environment means let us say a sea water application some material used in sea water application that involves aqueous environment and let us say the pipeline let us say one pipeline is laid uh, just uh, below the earth crust in the soil that involves soil corrosion. So, in that case we have uh, several factors uh, several factors for example, temperature temperature then acidity then partial pressure of oxygen we can also have presence of chlorine we can also have the presence of bacteria. So, in the soil due to these effects corrosion can increase then in the in aqueous environment the effects are even now temperature then pH level we can talk about partial pressure of oxygen or we can talk about here we talk about here we have partial pressure of oxygen here we talk about the dissolve oxygen then we can think of presence of chlorine chlorine or presence of any other metallic ions. For example, ferric ion if it is present in HCl then the corrosion of zinc increases. Then we talk about flow velocity then we can also talk about conductivity. So, conductivity of the aqueous medium would guide uh, the corrosion. Then this is the surface and in the environment we have in the atmospheric condition we have air and gas presence temperature then of course, humidity partial pressure of oxygen salt content in the environment salt content all would definitely affect the corrosion rate 
or corrosion. Then we can also think about the radiation effect, radiation effect or even sunlight for example, in polymer due to the effect of radiation there could be huge uh, uh, degradation of polymer. So, these are the common effects which can affect the materials degradation. Now, if we come to see that uh, whenever we talk about material degradation, uh, we would see that this degradation is actually a very, very natural phenomena. Because if we come to see the, uh, the thermodynamics of this material degradation, we would always see if the material degrades, degrades that actually uh, decreases the energy of the system. So, if anything which changes the energy towards the negative side that means, if there is any decrease in energy that process is more natural than the increase in energy. So, for example, one uh, case let us say in case of corrosion, in case of corrosion of iron if we consider, if we consider corrosion of iron the first thing if we see that what is the source of iron, source of iron in our environment natural source is iron ore. Okay. So, we have iron oxide, hematite, magnetite. So, those are there which contains iron and that iron is taken out from that hematite or magnetite by refining root, refining and then once we do go for refining, then we can make pig iron then we can go for steel making. So, actually purification. So, this purification would decrease the carbon content of pig iron and it goes to the steel production. Even we can go for pure iron making, pure iron we can make and this involves melting. So, we see that all this process and it involves lot of energy. So, energy consumption, so this energy con consumption involves in this entire process from iron oxide to pure iron, because this process actually if we see from this to this it involves change in energy in the positive side. So, we have to supply energy in order to make iron from the iron oxide. Now, if we have iron block in normal environment, we will again see that if we have a block like this iron block like this, we will again see that there would be a gradual corrosion. So, gradual loss of material. Okay. So, the block is thickness is reducing and all the side the thickness would reduce. So, finally, from there from that point onwards your thickness is reducing and finally, if you keep it for a longer duration it will convert to this is iron it will convert to again this. So, we see that this process when iron is oxidized that involves lowering of energy. So, actually it has a natural tendency to go to the iron oxide again and this is actually corrosion which takes the iron to iron oxide. So, now we see that this is a natural process the corrosion is natural process. Now, when we talk about corrosion we need to see a, a proper definition of corrosion. So, we have talked about the degradation now let us see the proper definition of corrosion. So, definition of corrosion there could be practical definition, practical it says that the tendency, tendency of a metal to revert back to its 
native state. That means, iron goes for change to iron oxide. Now, if we come for the scientific definition that says that it is an electrochemical degradation electrochemical degradation of metal if we consider only with respect to metal metal as a result of reaction with environment. Now, the key factor is electrochemical nature. So, the corrosion scientific definition of corrosion involves electrochemical nature. What do we mean by electrochemical nature? Now, electrochemical nature means uh, it is actually involves the transfer of electrons. Okay. Now, if we consider a zinc rod which is dipped in HCl which is acid and let us consider that this acid is very pure in nature. That means, and also we consider that this acid does not contain any dissolved, uh, dissolved oxygen. If it does not contain any dissolved oxygen, if we come to see the, the product that is coming out due to the reaction with zinc and hydrogen and HCl, we would see that the reaction would be this reaction would happen. Now, in this reaction, but before see before understanding this reaction, the first thing the first observation would be there would be bubble formation on the surface of zinc rod. And if we analyze this bubble, we will see that this bubble is nothing but hydrogen gas. Now, if we see this reaction, now if we break this reaction into two halves, we will see that zinc goes to zinc plus plus and H plus goes to H. Now, let us say 2 H plus and how we come from how we would be able to go from zinc to zinc plus plus. So, it has to 2 electrons should be taken out from zinc. So, that it goes to zinc plus plus and for this process if we add 2 electron here then it would go to this react this product which is 2 H. Now, this 2 H will combine and then form H 2 gas. Now, in this process if we see carefully that this process it actually an oxidation process. or we can also see that this process we can also define it as anodic reaction so this is the anodic reaction why because it two electrons are taken out from zinc zinc atom and it goes to zinc plus plus ion now whenever we have zinc plus plus ion that means from the zinc rod zinc plus plus ion is coming out that is the only source of zinc plus plus. So, zinc plus plus ion are coming out from zinc and that means there is a loss of mass there is loss of mass from zinc rod and loss of mass of zinc rod that is happening because of electron 
electrons taken out from zinc. So, that means, it is an electrochemical reaction and same thing we need to satisfy loss the mass uh, uh, conservation of charges. Since, two electrons are taken out these two electrons will be consumed by two H plus ion and this H plus ion is coming from the HCl, HCl acid because HCl is the acid. So, you have the pH of HCl the acid would be less than 7. So, we have lot of H plus concentration lot of H plus ions that are present in the solution. So, this 2 H plus will consume this 2 electron and it will go to H 2 and this is actually reduction process and this is also we can say that it is a cathodic reaction. Now, this is also electrochemical reaction. Now, if we consider these two reactions, then we see that if we combine these two, we will get to this. So, the final reaction actually it involves two electrochemical reaction, one is anodic reaction, one is cathodic reaction and this is also termed as one half cell reaction and this is also termed as one half cell reaction and these two half cell are combining each other and then forming a complete reaction is happening and this complete reaction leads to zinc chloride formation and this lead to corrosion or degradation or the mass loss of zinc rod. Now, if we blow it up we will see that if this side zinc ion comes out. So, here we have a small mass loss and this electron 2 electron this 2 electron would go this conductor will conduct this 2 electron extra electron these 2 electron it involves 2 half cell cathodic reaction. So, that means, it is a it is an electrochemical reaction the, and it involves 2 half cell reaction and also it is in total it is electrochemical degradation. So, this means the electrochemical degradation of metal. So, whenever we consider electrochemical degradation we must consider these two half cell reactions and there could be many half cell reactions we would come to know in consecutive lectures. So, we see that there are two half cell reactions and also it involves those reactions those half cell reactions are happening on the electrode on the on the metal surface and this join we have oxidation reaction or anodic reaction that is why this is called anode and where we have cathodic reaction that part is called cathode. So, we see that there are four basic components for any electrochemical reaction complete electrochemical reactions. One is anode, second one is cathode, then we see that there could be there is ion transaction ion, ion movement in the electrolyte. So, if we do not have this ion movement, so one hydrogen ion is taking one electron and going to hydrogen atom. So, the next hydrogen ion would come here, so that there would be always migration of ions in the electrolyte. So, we need one electrolyte. Electrolyte and finally, we see that these two electrons which are forming due to oxidation reaction, those two electrons should go to the zone of cathodic reaction and there would be conduction of these two electrons. So, we need a conductor. So, these are the four components of any electrochemical reactions and always we will see any electrochemical reaction in the future lecture we would see that every time we have four different four components in that particular electrochemical complete electrochemical reactions. And finally, we would see that whenever we talk about this corrosion it involves four factors one is metallurgical 
So, if we see the corrosion, so this is let us say the corrosion part, so then it would have mechanical factor, mechanical factor, it would have a metallurgical factor and then it would have thermodynamics and then finally, one side it would have electrochemical. So, this involves rate and this involves stress, this involves material. So, overall this is the basic understanding of uh, corrosion or the we would say that what is the basic understanding of scientific definition of corrosion which says electrochemical degradation of metal as a result of reaction with environment with the metal. Thank you.